Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about my residency experience. So if you wanna know how to get all of your pharmacy residency interviews and what to do to make sure you get noticed by residency programs, then keep watching. This residency process was so stressful, okay? Um, but really, you just have to prepare. If you kind of just segment it and put it into steps, then you'll be fine. So the first step is figuring out what you want to do in your farm school career. Now for me, during my appies in um, general medicine, I realized very quickly that I did not want to be in the hospital. That that's just not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go see all the things, smell all the smells, like that's just not what I wanted to do. So um, actually at that point I almost gave up with wanting to do residency. Um, I only you know had that in my mind because I know that residency is something that is a stepping stone to other things. A lot of jobs require your residency train and things like that and I didn't want to limit myself. At the same time doing a whole other year um, in a hospital just didn't sound like anything I wanted to do so I almost quit. But then I remember that there are different kinds of pharmacy residencies, not just hospital, but you also have managed care pharmacies where you're doing more with um, you know, insurance companies, things like that. And there's also this new kind of sector of community AMCARE residencies or AMCARE focused residencies. And those are for um, pharmacists or pharmacy students out there that want to get more training in ambulatory care, do more direct patient care, um, being able to really learn the skills it takes to manage a pharmacy and do clinical services and things like that. And so when I learned about that aspect, that's where I wanted to go. After you figure out what it is that you want to do with your pharmacy career is look at residencies that you're interested in. So like I said, I'm now going more towards the community and care kind of pathway because that's what I want to do with my career as a pharmacist. So then I began, you know, looking at programs and it starts early in the year. There are a lot of people that are applying to residencies, okay? You're gonna be one out of a hundred or, you know, who, who knows? But, um, so you wanna make sure that um, you get noticed by these residencies because they're getting tons of applications. A lot of people are gonna apply to the residency. And so what you need to do is make sure you stand out. I made sure that all of the directors knew who I was. So, and this is months in preparation. So mid-year is December. Before December, I would make sure I looked at the program, saw what they had um, to offer, but then I would still go ahead and just email the, uh, the email the RPD or, or the pharmacy the residency pharmacy director and I would ask them a question that wasn't necessarily on the website so I would say something you know they're, they're telling you about their program and this and that and that some places there's am care clinics or whatever so I would say oh what kind of disease states do you see in your clinic and you know just some kind of other question that goes along so they know that you've looked on the website and looked at the brochures but something that is specific so they know that okay uh, that isn't on there they want to know some more information so that kind of stood out and then I got a reply from each and every one of the directors that I reached out to um, they gave me more information on the brochure maybe something that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't reach out so that's an important tip oh another thing as far as reaching out to the RPDs is sometimes they can link you to the resident and uh, I got a lot of good information from the residents too before I even applied to the program. So that's important too. Another thing is making sure you're going to mid-year. So now that the RPD knows who you are, they know your name, they know that you're interested in their program because you ask questions, now they want to see your face. So you go to the mid-year meeting, you, you know, map it out, know what you're going to do, know what you're going to look like, be prepared, you know. And then you make sure you go to the tables to meet the RPD and meet the residents. Um, it's a lot of times there'll be like sign up sheets on the um, sign up sheets at mid year to sign up at, and it shows the residency when they're going back through the list and going back through the applications um, that this person was really interested. They came to see us at mid year. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, one of the residencies that I applied to, and I'll get into that, but one of the residencies that I applied to had a lot of applicants, which you're gonna that's gonna be the case. There are way more. Uh, people interested in residency then there are residency spots available and so one of the things that um, this person told me about you know how I was selected was well you came to the table we had over 200 applications and the first thing we did to cut some people off is to see who didn't come to the table and then those was who we looked at so that's just to point out how important that aspect is is going to see the teams at the mid people at mid-year and then when you're there you know you're making sure the RPD knows your face and everything and show your interest but you really want there to ask the resident questions like 
you know, like, is there anything you don't like about the residency? Um, where do you live? You know, if this is a residency that's not in an area that you're familiar with, make sure you ask them those questions. Like, where do you live in relation to, you know, the clinic, in relation to the pharmacy? Um, is there a lot of transportation involved? Um, you know, how stressed out do you feel? What's your stress level? Um, things like that. So those are all important questions to ask the, re the residency. So we, before mid-year, we've sent emails to the RPD so they know that your name. After mid-year, we've gone to um, each table to make sure you're writing your name on that paper, asking resident questions, getting to know them. And then, you know, maybe after that, you can go on LinkedIn, try to find the resident and, and send them a message, or not send them a message, but um, connect with them. That's all great too. Just shows that you're very interested in all that. Um, but the next thing is making sure that your letter of intent and your CV are on point. Going to mid-year is very important for finding out what you're going to put in your letter of intent. Um, so I usually kind of worked on that after I went to mid-year. But the CV, that was all kind of done, fleshed out before mid-year, before that even started. Because you want to make sure you're updating all of your accomplishments, all of the cool things that you've done in pharmacy school um, that you want to put on there, you want to highlight any research, any jobs, the latest of pharmacy. Um, any cool opportunities you had and um, you want to make sure you're talking to uh, like my school had professors that were willing to look over our CV and critique it and help us edit it so that was a helpful thing but um, you know doing the same thing on your own doesn't have to be through your institution but that's important to getting your CV ready but for your letter intent um, knowing what to put in it so for instance uh, there was one residency, you know, in Miami. I happened to speak a little bit of Creole. So when I talked to the residency program director, I made sure to mention that, oh, what is your patient population? That's a great question to ask. What is your patient population? And um, that's where I got to know, oh, you know, we have a lot of um, Hispanic patients, Haitian patients. I said, oh, Haitian patients? I speak a little Creole. Um, maybe I could be helpful. And she's like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, like, um, kind of give it away, but if you can kind of connect with the RPD or residency on that level, guess what? I'm definitely putting something to do with Haiti or does be Creole in my letter of intent. And I did. And so um, kind of those things are things you need to put in your, your letter of intent to highlight in there. Um, and a lot of times the conversations that you have with the resident, the re residency program director, that can gear your letter of intent that way. So that's important. And so, you know, after you talk to them via email, you've seen them in person, you're writing your awesome letter of rec, your CV is great, go ahead and send off your um, application and that's what I did to get all my residency interviews. So I applied to three in-state um, residencies, community and mature care residencies, and three out-of-state community and care residencies. And I got all of my interviews. And you know, now the hard, one of the hard stuff is over is getting the interviews. Now it's, what do you say in the interviews? So, we'll talk about that in another video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you want to know what it's like being a pharmacy student in a top college of pharmacy, then go ahead and subscribe and um, check out some of the other videos that I did. Thank you.